Carolina Panthers fall to the Atlanta Falcons 38 to 20 and move to 1 and 5 on the season. Is the season over for the Carolina Panthers? Let's discuss. I was born by the river in a little tent. Oh, and just like the river, I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming. But I know a change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Hey, forgive me of my off tune singing but a change is gonna come one way or another and maybe i should play one way or another i'm gonna find you you're gonna get 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 fired oh my gosh sunday after sunday after sunday i just want to turn the tv off to be honest i want to turn the tv off I've got to move on to another sport, to another team. I'm not going to change teams, but maybe to the entire NFL, to the NFC South, to college football. I've got to get out of here because what I'm watching on Sundays with the Carolina Panthers and the defense that they're putting out there, my patience is running thin. I'm in a positive mood. That's the only mood I can be in. After watching what we just saw I don't know how this team does it. I really don't. And when I say a change is going to come, I think a change is going to come with Ejero Evero sooner than later. Is it right? Is it fair? Should it happen? I can't tell you. But it's going to happen. And whether it's now or at the end of the season, he's going to be the scapegoat regardless of who is out there. And I'll tell you as a fan, I know a majority of the starting defense is out. A few guys are even out for the entire year. You're missing Jadavian Clowney. Go back and look at the starting defense for today for the Carolina Panthers. Shy Tuttle, Aishon Robinson, Charles Harris, there you go, Trevin Wallace, Claudin Cherilis, DJ Johnson, J.C. Horn, Horn, Troy Hill, Mike Jackson, Xavier Woods, Nick Scott. It was a complete disaster and I will tell you it was a disaster to a certain extent the defense did bend but did not break in certain situations and I don't know what else they can do there's a lot of ways to go with this special teams because I am one of the few folks I feel like that is spending a lot of time talking about the special teams unit special teams has been terrible Absolutely terrible the entire season. Punt coverage, kick return coverage, I guess, is okay. Protection on the punts, not great. I mean, sure, you have an asset in Johnny Hecker, but punt coverage and being able to protect your punter, bad. We see a blocked punt. We see a lack of awareness. As a special teams coach, You have to be able to coach your guys to understand that if you have a blocked punt, down the ball. All the Panthers just stood there watching this thing as as if some magic, like, I don't know, somebody's going to come out and just like, all right, that's it, play's over. Sure, there's a chance that nobody touches the ball and the play does just, you know, the refs call and blow it. But go in and down it so that they can't pick it up. You have them picking up the return. You have holding... It was a mess, and they put the Panthers' defense in terrible field position on that drive. I mean, you go back and look, and let's see. Sorry, y'all. I'm going through the the notes that I have, and it's way down here at the bottom. I skipped over it, so we'll go back up here. Let's look at the drive summary. So that drive off of it, where did they start? I don't know what this is. Drive began, that had to be 
Ah, oh, that's the Panthers. Sorry, folks. I'm I'm getting there. On the Atlanta, Carolina 27. Sorry, took me a second to find it. The Carolina 27 yard line. <laughs> My gosh. I mean, the defense, no. Did they play great? Heck no. They gave up almost 200 yards rushing. This is an atrocious defense. Absolutely pathetic on the verge of being one of the worst defenses in NFL history. And I know they're playing with second string. They're playing with guys that probably would be practice squad. They're calling up guys from the practice squad to be active on game day. There is no pressure. They cannot stop the run. Guys are running past the line of scrimmage by about five or six yards before they are even touched. And they just make it look easy. Going back to the Falcons. Falcons, I mean, we started out, had a punt. We scored the first touchdown. It was like a rinse and repeat of Chicago, and then the wheels fall off. We did remain competitive. We had the fumble. When you have a fumble that occurs, you can't just get three points. You cannot get a field goal. You have to score a touchdown especially when you consider where we started on the 41-yard line of Atlanta and you only come away with three points. You move the ball. You efficiently move it. What, 36 yards gained on that drive? Eight plays, 36 yards, two first downs, and a field goal. Three points. Atlanta Falcons, though. Punt, touchdown, fumble, touchdown, touchdown. That was the end of the half. Two field goals, a touchdown, and a field goal. Much better in the second half, but not great. Not putting a lot of favorable positions. I mean, when you look at the field goal that was that, that they gave up at the you know towards the end. I mean, it's like the end of the game. It hurts, man. It really freaking hurts. The Panthers had an opportunity. <laughs> Believe it or not, they did twenty-eight to twenty. They are handing the ball off to Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard is plowing away yard after yard after yard. And then we have Andy Dalton trying to force the ball into a window to Ian Thomas with three defenders when he had the check down available and he throws an interception. You cannot make this up. Let's go back and look at that drive summary. So it was in... It's in the fourth quarter here. It was in the started in the third, went into the fourth. Sorry, it leaks over here. Okay. It was 28 to 20. Carolina had a 10 play, 57 yard drive, four minutes and 44 seconds that ended in nothing. And I know it was going to be a sh- like, I know we would have had to score again, and there was a good chance we would have needed a touchdown. But just to have it close to tie, 28-26, if we don't get the two-point, 28-28, if we get the two-point conversion, just give our defense a chance. Give them a, a, a little bit of hope instead of just deflating the entire thing. So here we go. Starting on this drive, let's see. That was the kick. Don't care about that. Had a penalty. Yeah, we even started back on this drive deep. On the 12-yard line, Andy Dalton, short pass to Jadavian Sanders. He's pushed out of bounds. That was a gain of eight yards. So a really good start. And then it was the Chuba Hubbard train. Chuba Hubbard, gain of nine yards. Chuba Hubbard, left end, gain of 12 yards. Chuba Hubbard, up the middle, five yards. Chuba Hubbard, up the middle, eight yards. Andy Dalton passed to Deontay Johnson for 12 yards. Chuba Hubbard, two yards. So was, he's like, it was slowing down a little bit. And I know when you're running the ball effectively, that is a very good time to try to, to pick up the pass. That's your, your moment. All right, we're going to key in. Let's do a play action pass. Let's get something out and on the move. You go, you're on the 32-yard line. At a minimum, you're getting three points. 
And sure, you, you you need touchdowns, but you take three points here and then kick it off and pray <laughs> that you can somehow get a stop. Andy Dalton pass intercepted at the 15 of Atlanta, and then they ran it for one yard. Then they go down and drive. That was your game. And I don't – I I mean, I don't know what to tell you. If you are a Panthers fan – it is going to be a long, long time before we see this team win. I don't know what's going to change, how it's going to change. We are seeing an efficient offense. Is it a top 10 offense? No, but efficiently scoring, being competitive, doing enough, more than we have ever seen in the last year and a half, led by Andy Dalton. And the Panthers sit here. At one and five, I mean, you are at the point, and I know Dave Canales is Mr. Optimistic. Dave Canales is never going to fold on the season, but I think it's a very legitimate question to ask, at what point are we going to see Bryce? And it's not because we necessarily want to. I understand fans that are like, hey, we're done, we're moving on. I do think there's this one one more time that has to happen then we'll get to see him. And is it going to be much better than what we're seeing? No. But I think the, the point that we're seeing is you're one in five. Andy Dalton is playing as best as he can, giving us an opportunity. The offense has given us an opportunity, and we can't win. Folks, Chuba Hubbard is number three in the NFL in rushing yards, and that is with Dave Canales pulling the plug on him multiple times and not allowing him to keep his momentum. It's ridiculous. And if I am the Carolina Panthers and I am in that front office and I'm Dan Morgan and Brant Tillis, you better figure out a way to get a contract in place with Chuba Hubbard before the season is over. Stop letting good players walk out of this organization. Just stop, man. You can have a great one-two punch with him and with Jonathan Brooks. You can figure out how to move miles if you want in the offseason and and move on from there. But we cannot let Chuba Hubbard walk away. There's absolutely no way you can let that happen. But looking at the the quarterback play itself, and I do think to a certain extent, you know, it's kind of emotional, but I I think part of this game is on the offense. Only because defense did enough. You have to did the defense play great? Is the defense good? No. And no. Those are easy questions. When you look at the circumstances of the situation with who is here, when you're like, oh, there's a, a lot of second string guys, a rookie, a few, guys, a few rookies, Shaw Smith Wade getting some playing time, guys getting some reps. Eh, you're like, okay, well, when I compare it under that lens, my expectations are lowered. And I can only expect so much. And what we saw was them doing enough. Now, I'm not saying, again, they played good. But they made some opportunities. You force a turnover. You only get a field goal off of that. You turn the ball over yourself. It's easier to play defense and and make things happen when you're playing with the lead or the game is close, when there's less pressure on you. And we know, at least in the state of where we are, missing a lot of starters and just missing talent in general, that this team has is, is got to put up points. It is so frustrating, man. And ugh, it's just going to be a long year. And I said it, like, what is this, one in six? Six games in, 17. I still have 11 games to go as a content creator. We are on the verge of moving into mock draft season. It is that early. Last year, again, was like my first full year doing this. So seeing it the first time around, I was in it. And I was like, oh, this is so fun. I love talking through this stuff game by game. The development of Bryce Young. We had storylines along the way. Coaches getting fired and (laughs) all the changes that happened. But going through... In this stint, I'm like, okay, well, this is it. 
season's going to be over before we know it. And yeah, for me as a content creator, I'll be turning to mock drafts, which is not what I want to do. I want to talk about the season that is present. The team that is on the field now, that's playing football now, not the future, not wondering who are we going to sign, who are we not going to sign, who are we going to draft, what free agents are we going to look at, who's coming back, how healthy are these folks going to be. I don't want to do that, but that's the, where we're getting to. It is that close. We did get confirmation Andy Dalton is going to start next week against the Commanders. So that tells me that Canales is not throwing in the, the flag just yet. He's not waving the white flag, which I wouldn't expect him to. So he's going to trot Andy Dalton out there another week. <laughs> and I just, I laugh because I don't know. Are we going to get Josie Jewell back and Jadavian Clowney? And uh, I mean, heck, is, is DJ Wonham ever going to show up? It, so I guess like week over week, he's got faith that somehow we can figure it out. And I know he's got to do that. That's his job to think that you're going to win every week. But as a fan watching what we are, it's like, I don't know what's worse getting blown out every week or being semi-competitive. And maybe it is being semi-competitive because if we were getting blown out, I mean, it'll just be like, okay, well, it's another loss. Here it's a little bit different. It's like we're in the game, close game again, and then it just trails away as we are unable to keep this thing tucked in. Oh, it hurts, man. Oh, man, it does. Because I am a fan of the team as much as I, I create this content. I mean, I, obviously I'm not doing it for, I don't know, as a job. <laughs> Although we are monetized on YouTube, YouTube partners. So that is a fun adventure that we're going down. So I don't know, man. It's it's a wild, wild time. There's only so much you can say, too. I think it gets very repetitive and redundant when it's just there is nothing I can say to any Panthers fan that's going to make you feel good about this team because it does feel like years away. Because now that you don't have Bryce, if we were in the state that we are today playing in games like this and Bryce Young was the quarterback, I would feel better about tomorrow. I would feel better about next week, about next year, about next month. I would feel better about the entire situation. I'd say, oh, okay, we got ourselves a quarterback, but it's Andy Dalton. And... I know I'm a fan of Andy, and I'd like to have him back next year, more than likely, maybe even the year after. But what does that really get you? Because in a year or two, you're still going to be searching for a quarterback, and you're an injury away from him going down and being right back in the same position. Like It will continue to put you there, and you're just like, okay, well, we're doing that, right? And so... I don't know what the benefit is of going through the motions that we are and not winning football games. Canales has shown this offense can be good. I don't know if it's going to get to him or not. It's this is rough, man. It it's so bad. It really is. Let's take a look at some of the numbers on our side. So I did talk about who didn't play. So Jadavian Clowney was inactive. Bartholomew, the the cornerback. Josie Jewell, Rame. Kingston, Moten, Moten was out again, and Tommy Trimble. Offensively, let's talk about it. Deontay Johnson stepped up. Jonathan Mingo, Cats, out of the bag. I don't know. <laughs> Icky Aquano, okay. Icky. Icky's false starts destroyed us, man. And it wasn't him. There was a few. I think Zavala was on one. Offensive line, though, relative to everything, with Brady Christensen and Yash Nijman played a heck of a game. I mean, you couldn't have asked for much better play out of this offensive line. That's the other thing. We've got an offensive line. We've got a running game, but we abandon the run way too early. We don't stick with it. It's very frustrating as a fan because you're like, just run the ball. Run the ball and we'll win <laughs> or be competitive closer. Iki Aquanu, Damian Lewis, Brady Christensen, Robert Hunt, Yash, Davian Sanders. Sanders, too. 
he's still dropping the ball, but he's starting to make a few plays. Xavier Leggett, Andy Dalton, and Shuba Hubbard. Looking at your box score here for the Carolina Panthers, eight carries, 92 yards for Chuba Hubbard, 5.1 average, 19 yards was the longest carry. Why did he not get more carries? Why did he not get more touches? I wanted to see him have about 25 touches, and I think maybe if we had kept the drive going, I think he would have got over 100 yards again right there on the cusp. Dalton had three for 21, and Miles Sanders had three for one. Here's the thing. When you talk about the rushing attack, I don't know when it makes sense, if it does, for Brooks to come back. Like, if you're going to be this bad, there is no reason to rush Jonathan Brooks back out here. You might as well just wait until maybe the end of the season and let him get just a few touches in. When it's been over a year, because I, I, he's not, I mean, it's, unless he's playing defense, like, <laughs> well, I don't know what you expect. So that'll be a storyline, though. And then 26 to 38, 221 yards for Andy Dalton, two touchdowns, 78.9 rating, two interceptions. For the Falcons. Rushing attack, 18 carries, 105 yards, 5.8 average, one touchdown for Algier. Bijan Robinson, 15 for 95, 6.3, 17 yards per carry. Easy money. You knew this game also was just not going to go our way. Early on, when there was a conversion, it was like third and short. We essentially bat the ball down or it gets batted and bounce right. it bounces right into Ray Ray McLeod's hands. You cannot make this up. One thing that did go our way was the fumble recovery off the challenge because when I saw it all happening, I'm like, why are we challenging this? Fantastic. Then you kind of felt like, oh, maybe things are going to happen. We're going to win a game. Drake London, 6 for 74. Pitts, 3 for 70. And I should say the one touchdown. I mean, they just ran the ball. It's, it's, all they had to do was run the ball. Three rushing touchdowns. I talked about their rushing attack, having one rushing touchdown all year. Three rushing touchdowns tonight. Kirk Cousins held a 225, but heck, when you can just pass the ball off. And or, you know, when you do need to pass the ball. I'm not say pass the ball. When you run the ball. But when you do need to pass and guys are just wide open, hey, that's also a benefit. I mean, you could, you could probably just stand back there yourself and throw it. I still think... Part of the miscommunication and where all this lies is on Trevin calling. I'm not saying it's Trevin's fault. I think it's hard to imagine that this team is going to be perfect and everyone's going to be well aligned going in and seeing what's happening out on the field. Like, I don't know. It's tough, dude. It is tough. Three for 38 for Mooney, three for 30 for McLeod and Robinson and Algier. Deontay Johnson, six for 78, one touchdown. Jadavian Sanders had five for 49. Not bad at all. I know he had a few, I think at least one drop. Hubbard, five for 11. Coker, Jalen Coker, starting to find a groove. Three for 30. I do think Jalen Coker should continue to get more snaps. I think he is an Adam Thielen replacement. I think he should get more reps over Jonathan Mingo. Absolutely case closed. Xavier Lee get three for 23. David Moore, did okay, two for 17. Miles Sanders, one for 12. Mingo had one for one yard. And then Ian Thomas was actually targeted three times on a few, yeah, a few screens, weird stuff. Hecker, 40 yard average. I mean, the one block that hurts, 58 was as long. Blackshear, one for 12 on the punt returns, kickoffs. He had three for 64, 21 yard average. Leggett had one for 25. Atlanta, oh, no, we covered all the fumbles there. Mm. Hubbard did have a fumble. Was that loss? So did Jatavian Sanders, which is nice. Uh, First downs, 25 to 21 for the Falcons. Six of 12 on third down. Panthers were five of 11. 
They were right. They were right at 50 percent. We were at 45 percent total yards, 423 to 335. Of course, in favor of the Falcons. Rushing attack. Let's see. Yeah, 198 to 114. What a disaster. We talked about passing penalties. That was the other thing that I was going to look at here. Penalties, 5 for 45 for the Falcons, 10 penalties for 74 yards. A lot of those on the offensive side of the ball. I will tell you the one with Deontay Johnson where it was like misaligned or, um, sorry, he wasn't set. I didn't really buy that one. That was kind of a BS call. I mean, he got up to the line. He gave a signal. He was there. He shifted a little bit. I mean, if you're going to be like that nitpicky, sure, I guess. But, I mean... Didn't cost us the game. Ended up scoring anyways. Red zone efficiency. They got into the red zone eight times. Eight freaking times. Four for eight, 50%. So, like, we we kind of did what we had to do. Kind of. <laughs> goal to goal, they were three for 50. I mean, we were two for three. I talked about the drive possession and charts. Average starting field position, 39. For the Falcons, they're on 39. The 32 for the Panthers. Defensively for the Panthers, not a big day for for many folks, really. Uh, Troy Hill had nine. Xavier Woods, nine. Trevin Wallace with nine. These are all combined. And then Mike Jackson, Nick Scott, TJ Johnson, a few other guys. Oh, it's rough, man. Panthers, you know, the you know, scoring before the half as well, like that two minute drive that they put together, remain competitive. Like they remain competitive, but when you don't have any form of a defense, there's only so much you can do. It feels I hate it, just feels like a wasted year, to be honest. Like I I I don't know. I know there's I, I just don't. I'm a, this is what happens. I don't know what to tell you. It does feel like a wasted year. Because, way I mean, it's another year in the books. Another year as a Panthers fan. We are seven years into the Tepper experiment. And is any of this like Dave Canales' fault? No, he can't help the last six years, six and a half years. But it's, it's here. It's present. The fans have felt it. We... Even go back before that, like we were teetering on competitive football. We're not even there. We haven't shown any signs of improvement. We are on a path. It's so at one in five, that's six games. We're on the path to win three games. Nolan was like, oh, y'all win what, four or five games? I said, nah. This is probably a three to four win football team right now. A lot can change. But it's hard to stack up wins and or feel like you've got a legitimate chance given the state of where everything is. You look across at the division with the Bucs routing, pulling away from the New Orleans Saints. Saints played competitive with Spencer Rattler back there. That's the thing. All these teams, all these rookie quarterbacks playing well. Panthers, meanwhile, just twiddling their thumbs with Andy Dalton at the helm and like, that's our hope is that he's going to be competitive, which it's, I'm not saying I don't want it because I don't mind it, but uh, this is just where we are. Explosive plays. The 52-yard pass to Pitts was the biggest play of the game. 24-yarder to London. Then they had a 20, 19, 18, a few 17-yard plays, 15-yard plays. Panthers, on the other hand, had one 21-yard that was to Sanders in 19, 19, 18, 17. A few of the plays there. I mm. heard that coup. So if you're in the stadium, I guess the Falcons say coup. Sounds like boo. <laughs> Kinda. If you're listening, I saw Keep Blitzing, Carolina Blitz, post that when he was walking out at the end of the game through the tunnel, told, I guess, the Panthers folks that were there, To keep stinking, as in keep pounding. And how disrespectful, man. Freaking kicker coming in, running his mouth after a game. (laughs) Like, what are we doing? The largest lead in the first half for 
The Panthers was seven. Didn't last long. Falcons got up by 12. In the second half, they were up by, well, I mean, that was the end of the game, 18. Time of possession while leading in the first half. Excuse me. Yeah, I don't know why it came through like that. I guess this is balanced out. They led for almost 20 minutes of the game. I mean, time of possession while trailing four minutes. Uh, it's just, uh, I don't know. I can only talk about the state of this team for so long. I mean, really. Change is going to come at some point. Change is going to to come and for now you just build off of whatever the heck is here and that's all you can do (laughs) it's all you can freaking do anyways folks i think that's going to do it for me today because i'm just drained i I don't really have anything else to say so anyways i appreciate y'all tuning in this is carolina dad y'all have a good one (laughs) 